After uh, a month of layoffs from some of the biggest companies, employees are struggling with how to react. Uh, in the meantime, there's an, in, an increase in anti-work sentiment. Artificial intelligence revolutionizing the way people work uh, and the future of remote work, which is uncertain. Joining us now is Jessica Kriegel, Culture Partners Chief Scientist of Workplace Culture. I didn't even know that that, that job existed, uh, but but I like it, Jessica. And, and I wondered about it until I saw things that, I mean, you know things I don't know. There's something called quit talking. What is that, on TikTok where you talk about how you've quit? Can you explain that? Because there's other interesting things here that are in the culture now that uh, that are kind of new. Yeah, as you said, anti-work sentiment is growing. People are seeing the lack of equity between CEO pay and frontline worker pay. They're seeing the mass layoffs that are happening. People are being treated like commodities and they're fighting back. They're doing things like quit talking, which is that they live quit their jobs on social media for all to see. They're also doing things like getting second jobs and third jobs full-time remote jobs without telling their employers, so it's a secret second job and third job, so that they can make more money. They're taking the power back in any way that they can. And because the workload would be harder, <laughs> one of their employers is getting chat GPT generated work from them. They're cheating. Yeah, many people are leveraging ChatGPT and other AI tools to automate all aspects of their life, calendaring, writing copy, and then software development even, people in IT support. I mean, there's a lot of ways that they can now use these tools to be more productive. And instead of giving all of that productivity to one company, they're feeling like, well, these companies aren't transparent with me. Why should I be transparent with them? I'm going to leverage these tools to make more money. And that's how they're taking the power back. And, and there's virtual layoffs and and. It, it, the whole world has changed a little bit, but Jessica, companies overhired during the pandemic, and this rationalization we're seeing from that is—it's it, not. I mean, it maybe isn't exactly like things that have happened in the past, but it's very similar to it, just just done a little bit differently, I guess, this time around. But you know, there's there's boom times and there's bust times in any economy, and that's followed by overhiring and then um, and then firing and layoffs. Yeah, and I think that there's this bit of a disconnect between the reality of the economic situation and the way that we're seeing the mass layoffs play out right now. What's true is that you cannot have innovation in the same environment that has fear. There's a massive lack of psychological safety for employees with all of these layoffs happening, and that's making them less innovative, which you're noticing with these companies. I mean, Amazon and Meta, they're historically known as being innovative companies, but what have they done lately that's very innovative? I think the culture of fear is taking over and they're suffering as a result. This is not, I mean, we're looking at recent layoffs, but once again on Friday, we're expecting a continuation of, of a pretty strong labor market, uh, signs of it. And that's what the Fed is looking at. I mean, we're at historically low uh, unemployment rates. So it's kind of weird that we're talking about uh, that this is the, the beginning of a trend of, of how people are responding to getting laid off at, with some of the best uh, employment numbers ever. That's also what employees are looking at, and that's why they're so frustrated. You're going to start to see increasing unionization efforts. You're going to see more anti-work sentiment getting louder and louder on social media. And the reason this is important for CEOs to think about is because their brand is getting affected. When people quit talk, it's negative for your reputation as a brand. Consumers are going to start stop buying your products because they're getting a bad taste in their mouth about what they're seeing about how you treat your employees. So Culture and brand are now merging in a way that they haven't before, thanks to social media.